Hey guys, and welcome to the RevitKid.com. This is the Revit Family Creation Series, and I'm just going to do another quick little tip. Uh, I figured I was going to do a bunch of larger videos, but I think some um, breaking it down into individual family creation tips might be be an efficient way to do it. So I guess what I'm going to talk about right now is just another way to make legs on this coffee table. And in doing so, I'm going to sort of explain the idea of nested families and um, stuff along those lines. So let me delete these legs. So I deleted the legs, now we just have our tabletop. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, a new family, and this is going to be sort of more maybe ornate leg or, or something like that. Something that you might not want to model inside your your actual family. And I'll explain a little more as I go through it. But first we're going to say new and family and we're going to create a generic model family. Now in this generic model family is where we're going to create just our leg. So I'm going to start with reference planes, RP for reference plane. And I'm going to move it over. This is just like we started the other one. And let's say this one is going to be two inches. I'm going to mirror it, MM for mirror. RP for reference plane. Now normally I go a little slower through this part, but I explained it once before. And if I do it a little faster, maybe you guys can see the advantages of using keyboard shortcuts. So you can see what I did right there. Not even touching the, um, I haven't even touched the ribbon yet. So now I have these, these reference planes here. Now I'm going to create one more reference plane. And this one is going to be our height reference plane. So once again, I'm using RP for reference plane. <clears throat> now I want my table legs to be tapered. So I want them to be smaller on the bottom and go large on the top, but I still want them to be squares. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dimension these reference planes because we're still going to want some parameters to them. So I'm going to create my equal dimensions. Oopsies. I'm going to create my equal dimensions here. So if I hit my EQ, you can see they equalize. If I hit my EQ, let me change the scale so we can read this. I know I'm going a little fast, but this is this is what I covered in the very first family creations uh, tutorial, so I figured I shouldn't have to really go through it again. Just uh, go through the blog and check out that video. So I just made it a little smaller so we can see. Now I'm going to dimension the outside, and I'm typing DI for dimension, for those of you who don't know. And I'm going to give these two dimensions a parameter. I'm going to call these width. Okay. Now I'm going to copy this reference plane in one inch. Or uh, yeah, let's do one inch. And I'm going to copy this one, and then I'm going to mirror that. I'm going to copy this reference plane in one inch. I'm going to mirror that. And now I'm going to dimension that inch mark from the exterior. So I'm going from the exterior dimension into here. And what this is going to do is, but I'll, right now I'll just lock it. I won't actually, um, it's basically like how we did the, the legs of the table in general. So if I, if I locked each one of these, you're going to see they're going to move when I move my, when I move my dimension out. So you can see that this is what it's doing, which is nice. But now what I also want to do is, I want to be able to control this because if we get too small or too large, we might want to change the taper. So I'm going to select these dimensions and I'm going to give them a label. I'm going to say add parameter. And I'm going to say, um, how about taper inset or something like that? Yeah, we'll just call it taper inset, whatever. Let's say okay. So now these have a dimension parameter. Now there's one more parameter we want to put and it's going to be our height. Now, for the sake of this project, where this is very important to have this height, let me just make this three feet, this height, we want it to be an instance parameter instead of a type parameter. And in a few seconds, I'll show you why. So, I'm going to click Add Parameter, I'm going to make this an instance parameter. You can see here it says Use to Extract Value from Geometric Condition, a little uh, complicated ling uh, lingo for something actually pretty simple. And we're going to call this one height. Now I'm going to create my geometry because we have our 
we have our reference planes and we know that they work. So to create my geometry in this one, I'm going to use what Revit calls blend, or Autodesk calls blend, whoever wants to call it blend. And what this is, is a top and a bottom extrusion with different profiles. It's pretty simple. Um, they show it right here, as you can see in the little pop-up. Click blend, and now I'm going to use my rectangles again. At all times possible, when you're creating families, use rectangles. If it's not a rectangle, obviously you can't, but for most cases, use the rectangle command. So this is our base. I mean, our, this is our base. Um, we're in our base right now, so I'm going to use the smaller square. So I'm going to use the smaller square here, and I'm going to lock them. Remember how important these locks are. And then I'm going to use edit the top. So now you can see that grays out. So now we're creating our top plane, and that's going to be here. So I'm going to do this. So we have two, two squares, one inside, one outside. I'm going to click finish. And if I go in 3D, you're going to see we have this shape, which is nice. So, so this shape is actually... We can pull it up and pull it down, so you can see what this shape does. Now, if we want that to be driven, right now the width is actually driven, so if I change the width to 6 inches, you can see everything grow. And if I change the taper inset to 4 inches, uh, a little less, 2 inches, you're going to see the taper change. See the taper change there. Now we need to give it our height parameter. So in the front view, which is our front elevation view, we're going to grab our extrusion and we're going to pull it up and lock it. Once again, you could um, you could use the align command if I undo this. If I press align, AL, or this button up here. I select the reference plane and I select the extrusion and then I lock it. So now this is going to move up and down depending on the height. And you can see what it's doing right there. Now remember how I did that instance parameter? Actually, first let me save this. Documents, let's say table leg. So now remember how I did that instance parameter here? This is when it comes into play. So now I'm going to load this into project, but I'm actually going to load it into my family project. So this is my this is my other family. So now I actually have a family within a family. And because we use an instance parameter, if I add my family, which is under components, you see table leg pops up, and here it is. Now I can actually change all my all my information here. So under under types, I can change this back to four inches. And if you'll notice, under type, there is no way to change the height. But under our instance parameters, there's a height option here. And another thing is, first let me line this up. So now I'm going to take this leg. I'm going to use AL for a line, or press a line up here, and I'm going to align this face and lock it. So now instead of aligning uh, instead of creating the geometry in here and doing it for all four, I'm actually just locking that um, that one family. So now if I go to my front view, you can see here's my table leg. <coughs> and um, there should have been a blue thing here for my instance parameter. Uh, this is locked here. It's okay. Oh, you know what? I locked it to the to the base of the reference point, I believe. Let's try and lock it to. So I did it to the reference level instead of the reference plane, which means now if I do the height parameter, I should get my little blue toggles. Let's see. Now, now I have blue toggles. See this little blue toggle? This is actually editing that that parameter. So let me change this back to 4 inches. Now I can actually align using the align command this reference plane with the top of this and lock it. And you'll see that, that um, if I select this family Oh, look at that. Did not stay. Let me lock the base first. Remove that constraint. So now I'm locking the base and then I'm locking the top. Align, top, doesn't want to change the constraints, very interesting. Hmm. I don't know why that is. Let's try it one more time, let me lock it to the base, align, 
you know, if I pull this up and I lock it, it gives me the option. So now I have this locked. Now technically I should be able to lift lift this table and it shouldn't throw an error. Let's see what happens. So the height of the table, three feet, apply. You can see our table legs stretched. Now hopefully it goes back. And it goes back. So now you can see what our leg's doing here. So now we have this nested family inside the family. And it actually is moving with it. So now let's give us the ability to let's just mirror this and mirror these two. Now all I have to do is lock each end, align, align, align here, and then align here, and align here. Now in 3D we have our table with this nested family leg and the nested family will actually manipulate with the geometry. So if I go to my family types and I change this to my 18 by 18 by 12, you'll see the three legs did not go because I did not lock them, but the one leg did. So they moved in but they did not move down. So all I have to do is go to my front view and make sure that these legs are locked by simply dragging them down and locking them, dragging them down, and locking them, and dragging it down and locking it. Let me go to 3D now. So here's our little stool that we can now turn into a table with a click of a button. So I click apply here, click apply, you can see everything grows. So that's a little example of nested families. Um, gets a lot more complex and you can do a lot with it but I hope these basics help you out and look forward to more.